my wife and I became vegan together in 1986, and for us it was essentially an entirely ethical consideration. We felt like it was extremely hypocritical to be going down to a laboratory and picketing them for using animals in experimentation, and then going home and eating animals for dinner. So strictly as a matter of ethics, we became uh, vegan virtually overnight, and that was in 1986. We've, uh, we've raised our daughter vegan, and she's now 21 years old. As a college student has been an athlete in her entire life. Uh, SAME was incorporated in 1996, and our work is entirely in the area of animal experimentation. We got involved in this issue because I was actually educated inside a laboratory. Many of the procedures and practices that we deal with are things that I was actually trained how to do. Animal experimentation is a, a huge issue and a lot of people have a tremendous number of misconceptions about it. They believe that animal laboratories are highly regulated, that the animals are protected from pain, and there are over, for example, in the U.S. there are over 70,000 animals every year that are used in experiments that are painful without anesthesia. We do also do a lot of work with trying to get the existing laws actually enforced because the USDA does a tremendously poor job of actually regulating laboratories. One instance we uncovered recently involved the University of Louisiana Lafayette New Iberia Research Center where over 6,000 primates are imprisoned. There was a situation where they were transferring three rhesus monkeys from one enclosure to another and somehow forgot about them, left them in a transfer chute so long that they not only died but their bodies actually began to decompose. And that should give everyone an idea of how poorly these facilities are run. They can't even keep track of where the animals are, or if in the instance of several other laboratories, such as Princeton University, who was recently cited for depriving primates of water, or the University of Rochester, who was recently cited for depriving primates of food, these laboratories can't do basic things like remembering where the animals are, giving them food, giving them water. Why should we believe they're even capable of doing something that roughly resembles science? And not only is this an, an issue for the care, or should I say the lack of care for the animals, but this is also a very real fiscal issue in the United States. At last report, the National Institutes of Health is spending well over $12 billion a year funding animal experimentation. And this is going on at a time when we can't pay for health care for human beings. How many people could we provide health care to for $12 billion a year? While a very large percentage of the animals used are rats and mice, we're still talking about, in terms of other species, tens of thousands of animals. In fact, for non-human primates alone, there are over 124,000 non-human primates in prison in laboratories in the U.S. Many of them are used for breeding programs, but many others are also used in actual experimentation. And the reality is that most animal experimentation is not for drugs. It's not even directly relevant to diseases that afflict human beings. The real reason that animal experimentation happens is because it attracts a tremendous amount of funding to universities and colleges and other laboratories across the United States. There are many laboratories, for example, probably 15 to 20 that bring in over 90 or as much as a hundred million dollars per year for the performance of animal experimentation. It's not about science, it's not about human health, it's about money. Misconceptions about animal experimentation, well, there are two. Okay. People very often think that, that the quote-unquote scientists that are involved in animal experimentation are it's almost as though they're, they present themselves as martyrs, that they're giving up their lives to better humanity. The reality is that the people that are involved in animal experimentation very often are making six-figure salaries for torturing and killing animals. And the other misconception that many people have is that animal laboratories are well regulated. The law as it currently exists does not make any experiment illegal. And even when the law is actually broken, the penalties are so small that the laboratory is essentially considered to be nothing more than part of the cost of doing business. And so the reality is that the laboratories are much more afraid of organizations like SANE than they are of the USDA because the USDA comes in and inspects once a year and goes away. We don't go away. 
directly, one of the most important things people can do is when they make decisions about the kind of consumer products they buy. If they can look for, I believe it's the leaping bunny symbol on products that determines that a product has been developed and marketed without the use of animals in testing or in any of the uh, chemical constituents for that product. In addition to that, we need to be in direct contact with all of our elected officials to let them know that we want the funding that's currently going into animal experimentation redirected to funding clinical and epidemiological research because that's how we get the information that's actually relevant to human medicine. If it doesn't involve using animals, it's actually effective for helping